Hi everyone, welcome to week seven. Uh, so we're going to start off today with the geometric distribution. Uh, so something nice and easy theoretically. Uh, so it's just a new different, uh, a new geomet a new distribution idea. So this is something that actually was posed in chapter one of the book. So like they did this at the very beginning, uh, but I waited until now to kind of talk about it because it didn't really fit in with a lot of the things that we're kind of doing. Um, and so the idea here is that um, we take a die and we roll it multiple times and we want to see how many times we want to roll the die um, until we get a six. So obviously the first time you roll a die, then P is equal to one sixth, right? You have a one sixth chance of getting a six. So here the key point is we're trying to get a six until you get a six. Um, so how, what's that percentage? The percentage for that is roughly 16.6. Six, six, dot, 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 percent, okay? Uh, so that's a chance to roll a six in one roll. Um, and a chance, so if that doesn't happen, that means we're going to try again. But what that ha means also is that the chance that we roll a six in two or more rolls is going to be the complement of this, right? So one minus 16.66, uh, which is roughly 83.3%. And this is the kind of things we're going to be looking at. What are the chances and when um, a number will show up? So let's kind of take this a little further. So what are the chances of a six showing up on the second roll? So the second roll, that what this is meaning is, well, here we have two numbers. So this five sixth is coming from the first roll not being a six. Uh, so first not a six. And this one sixth is coming from the second roll, second a six, the second roll being a six. Um, and so that's the chance of us getting a six for the first time on the second roll. So this is, so yeah, so this is chance uh, actually here, the chance of a six showing up on the second roll is given by this. Um, so to roll a six in the first two rolls, so wh what's the chance of rolling a six in the first two rolls? Well, it's the chance of rolling a six in the first roll and a chance of rolling a six in the second roll, which is roughly um, 30, 30 and a half percent. Um, so I guess I should write this down, 30.56% roughly. Um, okay, so what about three? Um, so what happens for the third roll? Uh, so here so far, it might look like um, the birthday problem, right? Like it might seem very similar and it is actually very similar. And we can actually look at this in a um, diagram. So if I roll, so the first roll, right? I have either a six or not six. And I guess normally we did this with two different colors. So let's do this. So here, green will be roll a six, red will be doesn't roll a six. Um, and so here we have a one six chance of rolling a six and a five six chance of not rolling a six. So here we have, I guess, P1. And I guess normally we, most people have been doing N1, so we will keep that. Um, and then for the second roll, we have this. So here we have P2. This is N2. Uh, and here we have one sixth. So here's one thing that's a little different than the birthday problem. These numbers don't really change. They stay the same, right? And this is because, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So we have this uh, chance here, right? So P2 is just kind of doing the 5 6 and the 1 6. P1 is 1 6. So remember PI here is getting a 6 um, on six on the first for the first time for the first time on ith roll okay so what happens with the third one well the third one we do basically the same thing so i either roll a six or i don't uh, and so here we have p3 here we have n3 and again these uh things are going to be the same five six and one six um, and this is coming from uh, exactly that idea, right? So here, the we fail the first two times, so that's five six and five six, 
And then we succeed the third time. So that's one six. Um, and this is roughly equal, or this is actually directly equal to 25 over 216. Um, and adding these together basically give us 42.13%. Uh, um, and so you can kind of see here we're getting like a little pattern. Um, so here the pattern basically uh, turns into this little thing. So first we count how many times we fail. Uh, so if we do k rolls, so k rolls, oh uh, here k rolls. Uh, well, we're going to multiply. We're going to just sum up everything from i equals one to k. Well, I need five six, but I need this i minus one times, and then I multiply by one sixth, and that's basically the formula we have for something like this. Now, let me kind of backtrack a little and kind of see here when we were doing the tree diagram how this looked very 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 similar to the birthday problem and the main difference here is that what's the difference between it so this is going to eventually give us the geometric distribution so the difference here difference from the um, birthday problem birthday problem um is so birthday problem I'll just say birth and then geometric for this one. Birthday problem is every time we chose someone, we never chose them again. So this one was birthday problem is sampling without replacement in essence. Because each time we look at something, we don't, without replacement, we don't put it back into the set. Whereas a geometric distribution requires sampling with replacement. With replacement. And that's, I think, one of the things that a lot of people did wrong for um, that problem um, is they tried to do sampling with replacement when it was a sampling without replacement problem um, on the exam. So uh, this is the kind of formula we end up getting. Um, and here what we can do is we can actually see that this, uh, we know these, we can actually just replace this with variables, right? So this one sixth, well, actually, I can bring this one sixth in front, right? Uh, and then here we have 5, 6, i minus 1, i equals 1 to k. And here we can kind of look at this 1, 6 is our probability of rolling a 6. This 5, 6 is 1 minus p, right? Um, and so we can actually basically just replace this and generalize this to get, um, well, we just do p times the sum of i equals 1 to k, i minus p, or 1 minus p to the i minus 1. Um, but there's actually a nice little trick here. So there's a way to make this formula uh, kind of condense. Um, and so what we're going to do is first we're going to let q is equal to 1 minus p. And we're going to switch p to be 1 minus q. So basically what we end up doing is just switching the, the terms here. right? So this is p and this is 1 minus p, right? So I didn't really change anything. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to play around with things a little. So I'm going to multiply this out. So if I multiply this out, I have q i minus 1 i equals 1 k. This is the um, 1 part. And then I need minus q, right? So I need to multiply by q. So minus if I multiply by q, I have q to the i. This. And this, most people should actually recognize as a telescoping sum. So if you've done this in um, integration, you should, have, you should notice this as being a telescoping sum, which means we just keep the first term and the last term. And that's it. So we just get 1 minus q to the k, and that's it. In other words, so how is this useful? In our previous example, when we did this, this whole nasty thing, we can actually just replace this with um, what? So one, 1 minus q uh, to the k. So here we have 1 minus q in our case is 5 6. k is 3. So if you just plug this in, you end up getting the same number. And this is much, 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 much simpler, right? Um, where is this coming from? This is actually much more evident where this formula is coming from 
by looking at this diagram, right? So the thing we were doing originally was saying, okay, what's P1 plus P2 plus P3? Well, we can take the opposite of that, right? We take the complement. And so the complement of that is N3. So it's one minus N3. And that's basically what we're doing. And this N3 is, well, you just do one, two, three, five sixes, right? So this is just one minus Q cubed. And so this is basically what we're doing. We're just using this tree diagram. So notice how strong these tree diagrams are. This tree diagram is basically just doing the same thing um, without having to algebraically manipulate things. Um, and so that's basically the, 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 tri the geometric distribution. Um, so the chance of rolling a six on the fifth roll, right? So this actually becomes easy, fifth roll. Well, it's just uh, Q to the four. So for us, it's five, six to the four, one over six. So this is the fifth roll. Um, and so this gives us what's known as the geometric uh, distribution. Uh, so in particular, what we end up getting with this distribution is the following formula. The probability that x is equal to k um, is equal to q to the k minus 1 uh, p. Um, and we can actually give the tail formula for this as well. right? This is kind of what we had been doing. Uh, if we let x and we want to know less than or equal to k, this is just 1 minus q to the k. So these are two different formulas that are super nice uh, for the geometric distribution. Um, and I think we'll pause here or we'll stop here for um, this one. Um, and we'll talk about discrete distributions in the next video. Uh, so thank you for joining uh, and I'll see you in the next video.